here's something on the international front that I find uh, both damning as well as fascinating. So today it came out that the United States, um, as they were uh, the United States Navy, dangerously close to the shores of Iran, uh, fired a warning shot uh, across the bow of an Iranian, um, uh, what is it, the, the Iranian guard uh, naval vessel. And I find it fascinating that this is not being discussed. The reason I find it fascinating because it's not being discussed is because this is Donald Trump's foreign policy. This is what Republicans want. This is what Donald Trump wants. They have wanted to undermine the nuclear agreement uh, with Iran signed by President Obama, negotiated by John Kerry, which prevented war with Iran. And as soon as Donald Trump came in, one of the best things that happened to America was Michael Flynn having to resign. Because if you remember, almost like the second press conference, Michael Flynn came out and said that they're putting Iran on notice. Getting ready to set the stage for an all out conflict with the nation that we had just negotiated a peace, if not a temporary peace. And so Michael Flynn gets booted out and thankfully that made the onslaught or the focus on Iran dissipate to a certain extent. But now today we shoot a warning shot. There have been wars started for far less than a warning shot. And yet I notice a gaping absence in people discussing why Donald Trump's foreign policy is problematic, particularly progressives or particularly this group of progressives that the caller identified, they're not really progressive. They're trying to convince you that you should support Donald Trump. But yet here he, yet here he is exemplifying, I mean, really, like seriously, let's forget about, you, you want us to forget about identity politics. Okay, let's forget about it for a moment. You want us to forget about our privileged American d domestic positions. Okay, let's forget about America for a moment. And you want us to focus on foreign policy and militarism and American empire because that's where Donald Trump is uniquely different and he's fighting against imperialism and he's doing all this this is literally the arguments that I have gotten all day today. And yet every single one of them are either unaware or choose not to discuss the fact that Donald Trump's militarism with towards Iran is leading us one step closer to war. And that this is exactly what he planned on doing all along. And so while people are trying, when I say people, let me get specific, while a small subset of people who call themselves progressive are trying to convince you that Donald Trump still are trying to convince you even now that Donald Trump is somehow the real progressive on foreign policy because he does not believe in American militarism abroad. He's already shown you in Syria that he's willing to be as militaristic as Hillary Clinton. And he's now showing you that he's willing to go one step further by undermining a nuclear agreement that actually brought us peace. Even if only a temporary peace. But silence on the set. Silence from everybody who, who thinks that or who have an intention, who intentionally are trying to lead you to support Donald Trump because Donald Trump uses Twitter to fight the deep state. Like I really watched that broadcast and, and we have to have a serious conversation and it's difficult to have. And then this is, I'm not being an asshole here. Even if I'm an asshole all the time, I'm not being an asshole here. I'm being sincere. We have to have a conversation about mental health, the mental health of people who participate in politics and the psychoses that run rampant that um, we can't address. You know why? Because usually when people talk about mental health issues, they talk about them in a condescending tone and they talk about it imbuing a stigma onto mental health issues when in reality, mental health issues are, are, are just as important as any other issue. But 
being careful about not creating stigmas uh, or, or, or forwarding stigmas about mental health issues uh, can't prevent us from identifying when some people are honestly so tied up into this in a twisted fashion, in a very contorted, twisted fashion that defies logic that you cannot not discuss the mental health of a lot of people who call themselves progressives. I mean, we could actually go across the entire political spectrum with that, but I mean, I can't, I can't really worry about the psychosis of people that I would never align with, like the alt-right. They, they have issues, yes, but I'm focusing on people who we consider to be allies, and we can't broach that conversation because it's very difficult to do that without being condescending. That's one part. The other part of it is people aren't, uh, uh, people aren't discussing these things. People aren't discussing the militarism, the clear militarism of Donald Trump. They're not discussing, uh, they, they don't want to discuss it because purposefully they're there to elicit your support for Donald Trump. And they're trying to continuously make the, the, a progressive case of why they should, if you should support Donald Trump. And so when I watched that broadcast last night uh, by Zach Haller, I have no problem calling his name, by Zach Haller, uh, who has me blocked, but saw fit to put my name in his broadcast, but I digress, because we, we don't make this show about small things, but you know, if you're gonna put my name in the headline of your broadcast, it, it would suggest you want to talk to me, but if you want to talk to me, why would you be hiding behind a block on Twitter? But I digress. But when I watched it, and I saw the psychosis, the level of psychosis, I'm like, this isn't healthy. It's not healthy, and they genuinely believe this. And that's a dangerous com a combination. And that's a, e that's a combination that's easily preyed upon. And I firmly believe that Caitlin Johnson, who is trying to lead this, um, this, this merger, trying to lead a collaboration with the alt-right at the expense of the most marginalized people in America, I, I believe it's intentional. I think it's intentional. It's, it can't be explained away with ignorance. It cannot be explained away saying that she's dealing with uh, a level of psychosis that needs to be addressed. You know, her work is intentional. And to come full circle, the, the, the problem is, is that we are buying into a worldview. Sorry, correction. They are buying into a worldview that does not see a clash of civilizations conflict as American imperialism. And that's an important statement that I just said. They refuse to see what Donald Trump is doing to Iran as an example of American imperialism, of American empire. Why? Because then they would have to hold themselves and Donald Trump accountable to the reality that he has never been a peacemaker. He has always delineated between the type of war that he wants to carry out on the international stage. Now, we are still forgetting about everything domestic that he's doing to try to screw us up, which we shouldn't do because right now, today, Republicans are trying to take your health care. But we'll take five minutes, 10 minutes to discuss outside of the privilege of being an American. And by the privilege of being an American, I mean you're not on the receiving end of American drones. But they don't want to be held accountable to the fact that Donald Trump delineates between the type of war that he wants to carry out. He has no desire to be an interventionist if it does not forward American values or if it does not forward American interest. However, he is creating a narrative to suggest that attacking Iran forwards Americans, America's interest. So we're not going to intervene on behalf of any other nation with our military, but we'll sure as hell go to war with Iran Firing an unnecessary warning shot across the bow of an Iranian vessel because it was aggressively approaching the a United States naval vessel. But that United States na naval vessel was Paris, 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 Paris oh, I can't even say it. That vessel was dangerously close to the Iranian border. 
or to their space. And yet silence about that. Silence, complete silence. Because nobody wants to admit, nobody wants to admit that Donald Trump is, well, okay, let me be specific. That small subset of so-called progressives who are trying to convince you that we should align with Donald Trump with his fight against the deep state will never confess that Donald Trump is just as militaristic, but he's militaristic against Muslims. He has no problem wielding the American war machine. Fox News has no problem firing up their military war propaganda machine on behalf of killing and attacking Muslims and destroying Islam and making sure that Judeo-Christian values reign supreme across the globe. They're all about clashes of civilization. They may be able to say we're not for interventions, but they're 100 percent behind the xenophobic, hate Islamophobic interventions leading to war with a nation that we previously had negotiated a peace with. Do you see how malicious that is? Do you see how dangerous that is? That's saying let's ignore that's a fundamental transformation of your worldview to bring you into alignment with Donald Trump. Don't take my word for it. Go watch the videos. Go watch that hour long rant about why we as progressives should support Donald Trump. Simultaneously ignoring all of the things that he's doing, even in the wheelhouse that they want to focus on. They want to focus on international policy. Well, Donald Trump right now is being an aggressor on the international stage, even more so than Barack Obama. Donald Trump has killed more civilians in six months than Barack Obama did in eight years. But silence from the same group. But we should align with Donald Trump on domestic policy and foreign policy because he's using using Twitter to destroy the deep state. And that's why I say we have to address some mental health issues, not to be condescending, but because the logic defies reality. But the passion behind it is so vociferous that I actually think they believe this. And if they actually believe this and they're not being propagandists, then there's an intervention that needs to be had.